Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 233. We're in April, middle of April. We skipped three weeks. That means that we're going to have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about in triage because it's been three weeks since we were last here because I was on vacation and I did absolutely nothing. As always, this meeting is recorded for those of you that are with us right here, right now. Otherwise, what are we doing? Well, we're doing triage. Uh, it's going to probably fill up most of the hour, so that's all good. Uh, it's great to have all you guys in chat. Uh, Jacob, long time attender. Zach, it's great to see you. Becoming a regular attender. And Mark, it's great to have you back. It's fantastic. So uh, we're going to go do triage, and then we'll do questions and comments and other things that people want to talk about. And since we add a fair number of issues to our backlog or from the deep, deep backlog that weren't in spaces, we have more things to triage. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Bob, you ready? Let's go. All right, let me see here. Push the right button, boom, triage. Yes, uh, there is a triage. Uh, I figured we probably, we were starting from the oldest to the newest for a while there. I think we probably need to uh, go back to the newest since it's been a while and catch up on any new stuff that came in and then we'll start working through the backlog. I concur. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, starting at the top. This actually showed up. I don't remember where I saw it. Stack Overflow or something. Um, interesting that they put their paragraph in the triage part that tells you just to delete all this. Um, anyway. Um, yeah. So what they said is correct. If there is a restart required and something fails to install, you'll still get the error success reboot required. Uh, and I think this was in Wix standard BA. That's the bug. Thoughts, places we should put this, ideas. So I think in Stack Overflow, they were wanting the error failure reboot required. Is that, I, right? that makes sense. It does. I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, I don't think Burn knows it exists either. Oh, so like Burn won't recognize it as a restart code, right? Oh, <laughs> well, well it, Burn, Burn or Wix standard BA, BA, I'm not sure which, um, is saying restart takes precedence over everything else. Uh, Wix standard um, BA. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's because. No one knew, apparently, um, that you actually could combine the reboot required bit with the failure bit. Yeah, it's a gap. We should fix yeah. the question is, do we fix it in four? And what does that mean if we do for, does burn have to change? Hey, Ron, great to have you here. You're jumping right in the middle of triage. Well, probably not the middle. The very beginning of triage. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I I would say it, it would be a good thing to do. I don't know that we, you know, it's vital, but it'd be, it'd be nice. I'm not volunteering. Not it. I think this. I heard a lot in the pool this this last week. Either of you guys yeah. want to pick this up. It'd be nice if someone did it. Yeah. So does anybody in chat want to take a swing at this one? This one should be pretty straightforward, right? If there's no burn change required? If there's no burn change, yeah. Well, I mean, a burn change should be required because it needs to be recognizing that as a reboot. But that's kind of a separate change from this, I guess. But if you implement this... And then a bundle runs your bundle, then it's not going to realize it's supposed to be restarting. Oh, you're talking about nested bundles. Ah. Right. Uh, cool. Well, this part is easy. Then there's the other part of burn recognizing uh, error. What is it? Error failure reboot required? Is that the name of the message? I think something like that. All right. Well, we don't have anybody jumping up and down in chat. So four X or yeah. float it in four. <laughs> Those are kind of our <laughs> options right now. 
Yes, there is such a thing as failure reboot required. It is a return code that you can get or that is provided by the operating system. We're not making it up, I guess is what I'd say. Probably 4x. All right. I'm down with that. Unless Bob wants to challenge it. Uh, I was prepared to challenge it. And then Sean start, started talking scary things about burn changes to make it work. And now I'm less willing to challenge it. Burn to recognize that error failure yeah. that required as a thing. Yep. Okay, cool. Right. Forex. Someone can pick it up. It'd be a good thing. Add ability to add ability for a bundle author to disrepair <laughs> disable repair for MSI package or bundle package. Ugh. All right, there we go. So today there's no way to disable the repair of MSI and bundle packages were added recently. So that also have repair. Should we? Yeah, so this needs to be designed. I agree with this right here. The tricky part about this is that MSI packages could default to be repaired because generally uh, packages are contained within a bundle. So it's you know easy to just go, yeah, this is part of the bundle repairing it. Defaulting to repair for MSI package makes a lot of sense. But bundle packages, especially historically, have mostly been redists. And we've learned from our experience with .NET Framework and other redists that it's better to not repair redists as part of your bundles. It's better to treat them as independent. So repairing a bundle package, defaulting to repairing a bundle package may not be as ideal, especially if we're going to pick up like VC Redis is going to be like the most popular bundle package, much easier to author VC Redis this way, but you probably don't want to by default repair it. No, you definitely, that is almost guaranteed to cause a reboot. Yeah. So you, you don't want to be repairing that. And, and I don't know how many cases we have for I don't know how popular nested bundles are. Uh, your own bundles embedded in your own bundles that aren't going to be redists. Or rather, I say that differently. I think redists are going to be the most popular case for bundle packages, which is different from MSI packages where they're almost always your own. Because if you ship a redist in MSI, you generally should ship it as a bundle, and therefore it's a redist, and you end up as a bundle again, separate. So I, the whole thing around repairing MSIs and bundles, I also know if they should fork. They should, I, I don't like them being different, but the I think the 90% case, 80% case, certainly 70% case is that bundles should not be repaired by default and MSIs should be repaired by default. I don't know how well, we explain that to people. Well, really, this is another case where people really want burn to treat prerequisite packages differently. Yeah. Yes. That's exa this is exactly what was going through my head during this discussion. And we, we haven't done that. And I worry about having different defaults. I'm so, fine. If we have the ability to disable repair generally, you know, per uh, at a per package level, I don't know that we should have different defaults. Yeah. I don't like that either. That that hard, that gets really hard to to rationalize about. So does that? So if we go down the redist, the prerequisite, all those kinds of concepts, do we add a attribute that says your bundles are prerequisite or your MSI is a prerequisite, and that changes the default behavior? Do we create no. a different element? I uh, mean, and permanence is kind of that thing right now. Mm-hmm. Is permanence that thing? Yeah. A permanent MSI package kicks it out. Yeah. But they should still have the ability to change the default. Uh, agreed. I, 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 I agree that we, there will be those 10% cases 
uh, or whatever that number is, 20% cases where people will want to do the, no, this is a my own bundle of my own making and I want it to be uh, repaired by the parent bundle. I'm certain that will come up. Or here's a permanent MSI and I want the parent bundle to repair it. It's just a trying to get them into the right default space so that they, in case they don't know. Well, it, it's uh, it's never wrong to repair by default. It might be unpleasant, but it's not incorrect. You know, repairing the .NET framework is bad because it takes a long time. Generally, although you know, now that framework is an OS component, it's probably not a big deal. Um, as I mentioned, repairing the VC Redis is going to cause a reboot, yeah. almost certainly. Yeah. So that's unpleasant, but it's not incorrect. Uh, I'd be fine if the default were to you know, propagate repair from the bundles of the packages and just have a bit that says, but don't repair me, please. So I guess you're just saying, keep it consistent, repair everything, mm -hmm. and then they'll figure out pretty quickly that the behavior is bad, hopefully. <laughs> They'll try repair, and then they should go, oh, oh, this one. Let's not repair this one. Oh, yeah, here's how you do it. Easy. Carry on. Right. Add the attribute or whatever. As opposed to trying to be smarter than that by tying it to permanent or... Yeah. I, I, don't, like, I don't like yes, no's that, that flip multiple bits. Yeah. It, it's... Again, it, 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 you know, if everything were perfectly well documented with rationale, you could at least point to that, but... Even with documentation, good documentation, it's still a question of, you know, someone, someone looking at the, you know, IntelliSense for XML going permanent, yes, no, okay. It, it it's hard to, it's hard to imply that that's going to have other behavior changes. All right. So does this hint towards a repair condition on MSIs and bundles? That's sorry. How does XCs do it? XC package. Where do we end up? I know we changed that a couple times. If you don't supply a repair command or arguments or whatever it's called now, then it's not repairable. Right. And there's no condition. Right. That doesn't quite apply as well. To MSIs and because no. generally you wouldn't pass any new parameters to MSI. Um, Bird knows how to repair those. Yeah, and we just send the same properties, which is what you want that we did on install, which is probably what you want as well. Just send me the mm -hmm. same stuff you sent me on install. And if we, although they are conditionable. And those are conditionable, yes. Oh, they are. The properties are. Yes, that's right. And those are, right. So that oh, all works. Sorry. Um, so then it just turns into, do we have some way that you don't use it, don't have to use a custom BA to prevent these things from being repaired? Suppress repair, yes, no. I think you're going to want to condition. You, well, I, yeah, would you? What's the likelihood it, that it's going to change? I mean, it's just if as easy to make it a condition. You can do it. You can do a BA. Yeah. And we should make it easier to make BAs do stuff like that. But that's a separate topic. <laughs> Sean, any thoughts? Repair condition, suppress repair. Yes, no. Other options I mean I think I would prefer a condition but I guess I don't know how many people would actually make that a real condition and not just a hard coded yes or no false kind of thing like repair condition false there that solves that yeah uh, so again I think a high percentage would be uh, just turn on, turn off. A rare pair condition would provide more flexibility. 
that is how much worse than the uh, or how much more complicated than the um, the Boolean. I mean, Burn would just have to evaluate the condition instead of it already being uh, true or false. Yeah. I don't have a, I don't have a strong feeling either way. Um, the Ribera condition is more flexible, the uh, but it's also more complicated. I don't have a strong. Those are the two trade offs I think for that, and I don't have a strong opinion either way. On those. The only trade-offs. downside to the repair condition from that I can think of is that it becomes more difficult than a suppress repair attribute of yes, no type to always turn off repair, which let's call that the 80% case for redis packages. Repair condition equals false versus suppress repair equals true or yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. That's the, that's the trade off. Yeah, Jacob, that's exactly right. You you suppress repair equals yes for dynamic framework, for for VC redist, for WebView two. Yeah, it's gonna be another one popular. Yeah. You definitely don't want to repair WebView two because you're gonna tr- be trying to put on an older WebView two. Bad news. All right, so is this a is a this happening at four? If it, yeah, it'd be really nice. I don't have time to do it in four. Um, Sean, you've been in the area the most. I think it's mostly it's between you and Bob, but you've been in there the most. Um, if without it, it's going to be really hard to use bundle packages for Redis. Like I don't know if we'd be able to use it for VC Redis, which would be sad. Because we don't want to be repairing VC Redist. I mean, I think we should do it. I just don't know. It basically comes down to those two options, I think, at this point. Unless there's another option we haven't thought of. I mean, I guess the reason I didn't just do it repair condition in the first place is because Fire Giant had already used repair condition for something else, which was a completely different feature yeah and it's a little the condition attributes are weird from from a they really need much longer names um it's like when repairing do i repair or not as opposed to what we've done with repair condition before which was to trigger a repair which yeah. matches the English better, but not, but doesn't match, you know, like install condition. Except install condition is weird because of the whole install condition equals false and it go, gets uninstalled. Yeah, and these parts of these are throwbacks to the original burn, like the pre v1 burn, where an install condition that evaluated to false uninstalled the package. So does that. Yeah, it still does still that. Do, oh, gosh, it still does that. Yeah. If you can't tell, I still don't like that design. Um, <laughs> Yet, here it is. Well, yeah. I mean, there are some fights I don't win. Um, so, yeah, I want to do it, but I need to know how to do it. <laughs> I'm, I go, I don't know, I can go either way on repair condition. I'm not worried about what was done in anything in three. Um, so the question is, do we just need a better name for the condition to, to Bob's point? No, because the only way you get a better name is 
with something really convoluted. Repair condition is fine. I, I have no problem with the name. Um, again, just you know, it just needs a nice paragraph of if false when repairing, then the repair will not happen for this package. If well, the default request state during repair will be <laughs> none. Yes, that's exactly what everyone will want to. Yeah. Because your BA could still overwrite it. Also true. Right? That's the right. that's the kicker. Yep. I mean I think repair Which, condition matches what install condition is doing, so just without the false behavior. Yeah, well, it will not remove yeah. the package if false during repair. <laughs> well, no, the opposite of repair then would be to break it. <laughs> the break condition? Have we thought about that? The break condition, that sounds like break point. So can I lend debug from that? No. Um, I don't know. I think repair condition is the answer. I mean, it, it's logical. Does any, is anybody in chat confused? Uh, how do I say this? Uh, repair condition, like, is there any a better way to describe this thing? It's repair condition. What else would you call it? I guess that's what would chat you yeah. call it? What would you call it? You'd call it the condition that will prevent the package from being repaired during repair. And has well, no not prevent other, that will sorry. Unless we want to make it prevent. No, that'll depend. Suppress error condition. No. It's not error. It doesn't have to do with errors. It has to do with repairing. If during a repair, this thing when we evaluate all the packages during repair this package will not be repaired. It'll be skipped. The default will be skipped. <laughs> the default will be, yes, the default. Suppress repair. Yeah, suppress repair is very weird when you're back, when it's backwards. Suppress That's repair condition. condition. Yeah. So if that evaluates to true, you suppress it, and that's the problem with the suppresses. All of them, the they they flip the logic um, everywhere. And it's also it's only suppressing the default action. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to prevent the package from repairing if the BA requests a repair. Yeah, but unless we want it to do that. No, I I think the BA should win. I I just. I don't know how much we, I mean, it's like we have to asterisk everything and burn with that almost. Um, it's a shorter list of things that the BA can't override than can't override, I guess is probably the way to say that. Um, so, I mean, yes, we could, like all these conditions, the BA could override it. Same with install condition. Allow repair. So that, yeah, so allow repair condition I, instead of allow, I prefer like generally I prefer enable repair condition, but if you leave it blank, then that evaluates to true by default. Right. We don't. Again, this repair is default when requested. This is suppressing it, or this is allowing you to suppress it, which is why I want to suppress repair. Yes, no. Just because their suppress makes. The, the logic makes sense. For a yes, no, repair is going to happen by default if requested and not overridden. So here's your opportunity to suppress it. Repair condition broadens that. But again, you're, <laughs> you're, um, it's the default. So really, you're only using the condition to disable it in cer certain circumstances. But again, I, I'm, I can't, I, I, I can't come up with better wording that isn't really awkward. So I'm, I, I still favor suppress repair, but repair condition as you know, a name is fine. Repair action, repair, reinstall, none. Reinstall. That only makes sense for MSIs. 
Oh, right. It wouldn't work for bundles. No, I don't. We don't have a more repair. Repair. No, we got we got rid of mend. Yeah, I guess we could run install again. It'd be run that bundle with install instead of repair switch. I, I, oh. that, would, that would that would interfere with all the stuff Sean did. I think we got that right. So repair action is interesting, but it also doesn't give us the conditionality if that's what we're looking for. Yeah, random options examples, yep. Sounds like repair condition. I think so. And if it's false, by default, the package is not repaired. Yep. Right. Yep. Design. Design so uh, hard. Uh, right. So... Uh, are we doing this in four? Oh, I thought Sean said he was willing to do this. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Harvesting non-compressed bundle packages pr probably add payloads. Do you want to leave these other ones for next time? <laughs> we can't. I, I, I want to make sure I got through them in case you needed them. I, I guess I didn't know if you needed them now or not. We can do them later if you want. If you want to skip them, I'm happy to skip them right now, Sean. We can leave them for the end and see where we get. Fair enough. Uh, where do we do we skip these two then? Harvest uh, six five six seven five seven and six seven five six bundle package. Yeah. Proof. All right. Great. Write is seven config changes failed with some error code. Failed to commit is commit section. Am I going to get anything useful out of this? Probably not. Oh, bad key set. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Okay. We're only seeing this behavior on Windows 11, Windows 10, and then failed to write these changes. Hmm. So there's something with IS custom action on Windows 11 for this user. Someone's going to have to dig, in, dig into IS stuff at some point. Not it. Yeah. We'll put it in Forex until someone wants to jump in on it, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's like, yeah, someone should dig into that. Um, can't open Wix Project Preview. Is this the Preview 2.1? Yeah. 17.2, 2.1. And this has had lots of discussion, and I think the end said that Microsoft's still tracking this. So Votive's not working in the latest preview of Visual Studio, and there's an issue open against Visual Studio to uh, not break Votive, or if they do, I guess, explain what they broke. Yeah, I, I reproduced it. I reproduced it uh -huh. Tuesday when uh, Preview 3 came out, and the behavior is the same. Okay. So, yeah, this is not a votive. Uh, <laughs> it's not votive's fault. This is a Visual Studio change yep. causing the problem. Um, and I don't know. I, I think I, I might have used the right keywords to trigger them to uh, take another look. Oh, so you commented on the Microsoft one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was a. Because they closed it and it's open they, now? They, okay, they, click, click. Ah, right. Did I... they closed it and they've now sent it back to quote unquote the right team resolution not a bug not a bug we have directed your feedback to appropriate engineering team for that so they closed it not a bug again and then they've now they've triaged it okay they closed it twice or am I just not reading this thing no they it... <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I laugh at the... I, I pity the poor people who have to respond to these bugs. Oh, this is the pinned. I see. I don't like... Okay, fine. So, yeah. All right. So, they resolved it. Oh, I see. There's more comments of people saying this is... And there's Bob. And... 
that works in winter and start feeling that please reopen this issue yay and someone gave a thought i gave a thought nope i'm not signed in all right cool great so um it's external i hope um i'd, I'd vote for leaving this at you know triage for another yeah. couple of weeks and see what happens yeah okay let the, the let the wheels turn so I didn't even look. When did that happen? I didn't. When did it? Was that just Tuesday? Tuesday. So two days. Fine. Yeah. Let's. Two weeks sounds great. Um, offline installation of Wix tool set Visual Studio 2009 extension failed. And this is almost. This is always the. Yeah. Certificate is invalid. Yeah. Okay. That's this one. Um, I'm a little worried though because apparently one of our bots has gained sentience. Is this is probably to me. Yeah, this was me this morning. I was logged into this window, which is logged in as Wixbot. My bad. I did this. All right, this is that bug. Yeah. Um, yeah, this happens whenever they our certificates need current, I don't know, internet certificates. Which whatever the .NET Foundation does with their certificates has these problems. If you don't have up-to-date certificate stores, our stuff doesn't get recognized. Uh, this is not a bug they need to update their certificate store and it happens like regularly this isn't just with foundation certs oh does it happen to other things too it, yeah, it happens yeah. to us all the time and it has something to do with the way the dotnet foundation cert and the way they sign things the certificate they have whatever it is is not in the the set of certificates that was is updated by microsoft in these updates in these offline things. So they have to go get the extra ones. I don't know if the certificate's cheaper. I, I don't know. All I know is that when you fix it, it all works. Yeah. And we went around around with the Visual Studio team on this one time. Like, yeah, just update the certificates. Our stuff won't work if it's not signed. I was like, oh, fine. Or if it's signed but not validatable, I'm like, fine. So there you go. That's what they have to do. Okay. This one is external? Uh, or not a bug. I mean, external. Yeah. Yeah. External. It's... It's a problem with offline in environments all the time. You have to figure out a way to get your certificates. And there's a way of doing it. Like there's this whole yeah. ginormous help document that's like, oh, I don't want to read this. Um, all right. So I think that's the the new bugs because we go from 6.7 to 5.8, jump of 900, 6,700 to 5,800, jump of 900 um, issues. So we're into the old ones again. Continuing. How many do we have down here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right. Right? All right, yeah. I'm continuing. Everybody's like, okay, just keep going. Uh, could you guys please make better documentation? Could you guys just make better documentation, please? At least he said please. Yeah, but, you know, at a certain point, it's sarcastic. It's really quite poor. Well, so help. Add firewall rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, oh, God, yes, please, yes. Okay. So, I don't know why I kept this. I think this kept this. I kept this open assigned to me as just a, all right, what can we do to make this better? And I don't know what to do with this bug at all. Um, I made a suggestion four years ago, but punt it to oh no I think I was much ruder than that yeah punt it into oblivion um, I don't know what to do with this I mean it's like yeah okay this specifically is asking about uh, about procedural documentation yes um, which Wix has some of in the form of how to's um, and some of like the the shortcuts. There's a how-to, pretty sure. Um, firewalls? No, no, that's not a how-to. Uh, I don't know. I mean, just stick it in V next, and I'll just stay there forever. We should just close it. I, I'm, yeah, I get. I mean, or suspend it. Mm 
No one's saying we don't need better doc, but the see that's know. the problem. It's like there's a, a level of guilt here that I feel that I'm like, yes, I know should spend more time sitting down and just writing about all of this. And then I look at my bug list, I'm like, but then there's all these things that if I don't do them, like they're not happening. Um or a rather request for a new repo with a bunch of examples. I they want doc. They want they want a getting started and an everything from start to end and an integrated story across all of this. They're asking for a documentation set that you used to get in book form, you know, 20 years ago when you bought your expensive development tools. Yeah. I used to write that stuff and it's not, you know, it's, it's not something you do occasionally. It's as much design as, you know, designing any feature for it to be coherent and useful and make sense and yeah, yeah. flow all that. I like the idea of, of treating it as an example problem. Um, you can go a long way with code as documentation. Um, Oh, and then Zach brings up an important point. Wix is, of course, a build tool, not the runtime. Um, and having documentation on the build tool is only partially useful um, if you don't have documentation on the runtime, MSI in this case. So it, it, it's a huge space. So I find bugs like this to be, you know, unactionable. Yeah. Andrew, but unactionable first. Yeah, whether the script would resolve properties. Yeah, I mean, there's just, so there's just a lot to do with it. I mean, and... Yeah, but, but that's an example of, of, that's an example of reference, right? It, that should be clearly noted. And if it's not there, that's, that's a yeah. bug, right? Okay. That's, a, that's a doc bug where you go, oh, okay, thanks, because that's easily fixable. Also, would make a great pull request. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you can actually do that now. That is out there. Um, and some places do say when they're formatted, other places don't. So uh, right. Bob's not wrong about that. You can go fix those. Um, well, so my point is that that's a Wix thing, right? And that is um, entirely restricted to the Wix space because it's the custom actions that decide whether to format. So that also that's reference documentation that we have. Mm -hmm. It's incomplete, but that just makes it a doc bug, not a, Oh God, we have this huge space that somehow has to get documented. All right. I'm not prepared to let this go. Let's put it in V next, and it's still signed to me, which means I will see it. Um, and I, I don't know. I guess I keep coming back here, going, "Yeah, there's something to be done." I'm also not prepared to have it go closed and have a whole bunch of people come rail on it either. Like, I just don't want to deal with that at the same time. So, but it's not going in four right away. We have plenty of things that we have to do in four, including just getting the current documentation back up and running, which is a topic for another day. All right, support Microsoft's new MSIX installer format. So, It looks really promising. Oh, I disagree. Uh, this was written a long time ago. <laughs> it's cute. Um, I think this is rip required. This is the future. 
I think that's where this goes to. It's not in V4. Uh, Fire Giant has MSIX tooling today if you want to use that. And free stuff inside the Wish tool set is not currently planned. But we could put it in V next. And it's definitely not in 4. It's a lot of work. So it's not going to happen in 4. Luminous on 4X where you should put it? 4X because it could be built here. I guess we could put it in 4X. Yeah, 4X. I don't 4x v next, yeah. Sure. We can put in 4x. That's true. It can go in 4x because it can be built on top of everything that's in 4. Yep. All right. Uh, I, I worry a little bit about doing that. Um, Putting it in 4x? Yeah, just because people look at these assignments as. Well, never mind. It's fine. It's not assigned to anybody, and someone wants to do it. There's a doc thing. I mean, I, I hear you, Bob, but there's a lot of work on the other side of that. Yeah, that's kind of where I was going, but yes. Mm -hmm. uh, remove registry documentation implies it can appear inside registry key. This is merged. Oh, was this actually merged? And, and that. All right. Uh, go ahead and give this to me, and I'll just make sure that it's actually closed. That the doc has actually been updated correctly with my other three doc bugs or whatever I have. Just I'm hoping this can just be like, yep, it's done. Check it off. All right. Can't resolve candle 1150 warning with the information given. Okay. The service config functionality is documenting when installers decay to not work as expected. Consider replaying with that. And then the Wix user expected to be able to replace service code with Wix utils and be able to set the three needed attributes. Alternatively, I need some documentation and attributes without service config element. Solves the problem best. Okay. Added. I think that was the only bit. That was the thing that was missing? I think so. Okay. And but there's the, the, the comment from July 2019 is, is on. The documentation in the SDK is vague. It doesn't make any promises. It just says, yeah, this is busted. Here's how you use SC in a custom action to do it instead. Or, no, it just says you should do this. It doesn't explain how. Um, so it's not clear what works and what doesn't. And you know, if they're going to the extent of documenting the bugs in the SDK, it, you know it's not going to get fixed. Yeah, no. So it's really I'm struggling to to the right thing is probably to make sure that utils service config can do everything that MSI five service config can do, and then we can just say replace it. Um, yep. And the reason it doesn't do that today is because ours came first and then they added theirs. And so, and then we never updated ours to do all of their stuff because it wasn't until later that they said their stuff doesn't work. <laughs> right, right. And it was like, well, okay, fine. So then someone needs to come back and update our stuff to be able to do everything that theirs could do. I guess that's the answer, right? Which I think is what you said here. It's just yeah. delayed auto start. Great. So it goes in 4X and someone can implement it. Yeah. Works for me. Great. It's nice to know that we're that close to having their functionality. Um, oh, unable to build Wix 3.11 project references in Visual Studio 2017. Uh, uh, what is it? Just try solving this, what I did. No clue how, why it works. Okay, Sean, you got me. <laughs> Loading's assembly would produce a grant set from other instances from eight. Okay. That was from a while ago. Do you remember this? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's saying he has no recall. 
you guys don't remember either. This is this is kind of saying we just let the bug sit long enough and the bugs go away because no one can remember what it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I have no idea. <laughs> I've never seen this before either. When was this last touched? 2017, 2018. I think 2017 has just fallen out of favor. I think we just send this away. As Which we kind of already did. We already did. It's in confined. Just, it's gone. This is crazy. Loading assembly would produce different crayons set from other. I've never seen that error before. All right. Off, off, and away. Um, external? Yeah. External. I think that's probably a good way to do it. Send it external. Adding a new project to a solution that already contains Wix should prompt to add a project reference in it. This is a feature for Votive. That's, we have a milestone for Votive or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Someone wants to implement that feature, they can do that. Votive drag and drop, same thing. Hey, now we're flying. Votive drag and drop. Yeah, if someone wants to implement drag and drop, have fun with that. Bug called X bug causing XML data to overwrite some or all source files. What? Okay. If the visuals do extension. Uh, okay, so. All right. They <laughs> provide XML and didn't format it here. I don't have method looks race condition. I have an issue, so it's hard to say. For, okay, fine. Great. This is, let's send this away. 2016 hasn't reproduced. They probably had something goofy in their build process to do that. Bug causing XML data over it. All right, so that one, 5380, no repro. Preprocessor conditionals executed before command line variables created. Preprocessor conditionals executed before command line variables created. Okay. They were, oh. So is this a language tweak, Bob, that you're thinking here? Oh, well, reevaluate. Behind. Oh, sorry. Five two six eight. Reevaluate preprocessing. This feels really familiar. No, oh, this is closed. Or a lot of oddities. C five two nine. Make it less odd. Well, that was not actionable. Um, and then it was closed. V four, and then closed a while ago. Sorry, okay. what number are we on? We are on number 5259. 5259, five, okay. And I, your comment here, or your answer is, that's how you do the FNDF. Right. Yeah. And I think your suggestion is to allow this syntax to also be checked. Or at least that's why you left it open? No. Reopened? Uh... Yeah, there's there's no comments about why it was reopened. It was closed for like three years. Yep, and then there's then this. Then you took it. Oh, it's your fault. Yeah, well, and then there's this reevaluate preprocessor language. So I guess I guess it's part of this reevaluate preprocessor language that we closed. Oh. Sorry, I'm I'm now caught up. Five two six eight. Yeah, and five two six eight. I did some preprocessor changes a few weeks ago. Um, I don't remember doing this though. Uh, if end up handling this, should we improve this? I guess that's the thing. How how strongly do you think we should improve this in four? Well, I'm guessing based on the fact that I closed 5268 that I had nothing else specific in mind other than 5259. But there's a couple other things that there are other issues open that I, I know I fixed. Uh, Preprocessor-related things. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, but that was a really bad bug I opened. Yes. So, or a feature request. Yes. Thank you for agreeing. Um, I, I kind of don't care. Yeah. It, it's it's weird. I okay. Now nah, I'll, I'll go back and support myself. It, th- this behavior is weird. Um, there, there is no. Yeah, the the C, C preprocessor does not differentiate between the symbol, symbol and its replacement. Yep. Um, Wix does. Yep. And you know, you can certainly argue that the you know dollar per var dot whatever should not work in an if def or if in def. Um, I would argue it should probably complain if it's not going to support it. Because again, this is the, you know, there's no feedback from the preprocessor that it's not doing what a reasonable person might suspect it should do or right. expect it right. to do. Put it in four. It's already assigned to me. Take triage off. I'll, I will take a swing at it. I expect, given my experience with preprocessor before, I'll probably get it. I just wish I would have noticed this one not in the 40 milestone and picked it up when I did those, but that's okay. We'll take a swing at that. All right. Pre-process conditions. All right. Allow burn package to be hidden in ARP. I added this to triage. Uh, so Sean found this old thing about being able to hide bundles uh, and all that good stuff. It's a very old bug. And he's like, I'm just going to solve it. I was like, okay, that's great. I, I have, there's, I was, then I went, okay, but I remember this thing tingling in the back of my brain of having issues. It took me a while. And then Sean had to remind me of some of the behavior. And I think the end is in these questions here that Sean has answers to them. I can, if I can get them on the screen. Um, all right. So if we allow, so the feature is to allow bundles to be hidden the way MSI packages can be hidden. It was a long time ago feature request. We haven't had a lot of people ask for it since then i remember it being popular in the beginning but less since then i don't know why well my guess is originally it was all about it wasn't about nested bundles it was about not wanting bundles to be separate from packages the good old fire and forget model yeah you're right there was a fair bit of that in the beginning um yeah so yeah they didn't it wasn't that they didn't want the bundle they didn't want it hidden. They just didn't want it registered at all, which of course yeah. isn't. After a while, kind of got to place. That's not at all the way burn works. Um, all right. So anyway, when we allow bundles to be hidden, we are exposed to challenges that the Windows installer has when their packages are hidden. But we have the ability to define our own way of handling what we do when those challenges arise. So we have to decide if we're going to do a better job than what the MSI can do when they're hidden. And that was the set that I was trying to go through and work down. And so there, it's all around when the user installs the same bundle uh, or yeah, the same bundle hidden, not hidden uh, in different orders, what ends up, what do they end up seeing on the machine? And just trying to get to the, what is the what is the behavior you expect from that? Because it can get, because the combinatorics are interesting. And, and also with the nested packages that Sean implemented, nested bundles, not nested packages, nested bundles that Sean implemented, uh, there's the reference counting that goes with this as well, where the parent bundle installs the child bundle or the nested bundle, and there's a reference count between the two of them What's the experience from there? So that's so a set of questions I think I had I was, left open. I was only interested in implementing it for nested bundles, not for a top-level bundle. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. That's okay. So that's one. So on. So the idea is that this. So you. There's no. Blah, 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 blah. There's no 
switch or setting intended to allow a bundle to say, I don't show up ever. Right. Okay, so you can't just do ARP system component and hide a bundle or whatever the system code. Okay, so in that case, then anytime a, a user double clicks and runs a bundle, the intent is that that thing will be visible. Right. Cool. And if it's nested, it may be visible or it may be hidden the same way that MSIs can be visible or hidden. Right. Okay. Cool. So if we say that there's no feature to hide bundles, which I th uh, just outright, which I think is the right thing, again, because it's not fire and forget and there'll be registration. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Then that may get rid of one of these cases. Um, all right, so if, so there's there's all these different cases. So let's see. I think the second one is maybe the easiest one to start with. Yeah. All right. So I guess the question is, what do we want for some of the behaviors at the end of this. The one that I, I think probably sums up the things I'm thinking about most is the second one here is the, if the if you install the bundle, so you have bundle, uh, you have child bundle. Uh, I need to, I don't know what I said. You have bundle B and you install it. It's gonna get an ARP entry because there's no way to hide it. It gets an ARP entry, it's there. And then you install bundle A that has bundle B nested in, inside it. Then bundle A will install. Bundle B will already be there. It'll be done. It'll be like, all right, that's really good. Bundle A and bundle B will both still be visible in ARP. Right? Because the user installed both of them by hand. Right? I think that's the right, that's the expected behavior. It'd be weird to have bundle B disappear. Yeah. So then if you, but bundle A takes reference counts as, reference counts on its nested packages, in this case, bundle B. So then if you say uninstall bundle B from ARP, from Android Remote Requirements directly, it'll have a reference count on it because of A. And if I understand correctly, it won't remove it, right? The bundle right. B will like, I, I don't even know, what will it do? If you uninstall bundle B directly, but there's a reference count from A on it. The plan will only remove the reference count from itself. So the UI experience isn't that great. It'll look like it uninstalled, but very quickly. actually right. all it did was remove a reference to itself. Yeah, it'll like uninstall very fast. Yeah. But then it will still be an ARP until bundle A is removed. Yeah. Okay. And bundles installing themselves do get their own reference count on themselves. A yeah. self-reference count. So that way, if you... All right, so then the other way around, if you install bundle A and then nested bundle B... At that again has nested bundle B. You install that, there you'll get uh, um, no bundle B will show up in ARP. But then, if you were to get bundle B and double click on it and install it, you corrected me and said that's going to go into maintenance mode, which makes sense. Bundle B will immediately go, Oh, I'm already installed and go into maintenance mode, which is interesting whatever the experience is for maintenance mode there, then they could do a repair or an uninstall operation. And the uninstall operation would be a no op and the repair would be a normal thing, right? I think that's right. Because it would have no reference count of itself to remove. So it wouldn't, sorry, this is, you install bundle B standalone. Yes. It goes into, it goes into maintenance mode. Yep. An uninstall at that point would remove bundle B, right? Because the only reference count is from bundle A. Wait, no, this no. scenario that we're in is bundle B was only installed by bundle A. Correct. Right. Right. 
And so, then you go into ARP and you hit modify or uninstall. Sorry, on what? On the in maintenance mode. For bundle B. For bundle B. It'll do nothing. Because it has I'm, no self-reference count yet, because it hasn't been installed. And there's a right. reference count from bundle A, so it's uninstall does nothing. Really fast. Hopefully. So I'm... Okay, so you're saying that a standalone attempt to install bundle B would not remove the reference from bundle A. Correct. Bundle A is the only thing that can remove its reference from bundle Got A. Got it. Okay, okay, cool. And that's weird, but I don't know that anybody's really going to understand i mean repair works the way it does uninstall does what it does i mean the whole thing is just it's like hey this is already installed that's the part that might be surprising well it, it is different than how msi packages work right so if you have an msi package in a bundle and you double click the bundle or sorry the msi from the package cache even yeah and go into maintenance mode there you can uninstall it correct and it would uninstall Would it actually uninstall the package? Yes, unless you have the dependency custom action inside your MSI. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> From yesterday's stream. Um, yep. Yes, it would actually uninstall the MSI unless the MSI has the custom action for doing the dependency checks to short circuit and not do that. So if you use the Wix custom action, you could get the behavior, same behavior as Burn would have in this case, right. which is uninstalling it does nothing to the MSI when... Uh, it still has a reference count by somebody else. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like, uh, and repair. Oh, and then repair. If they hit repair, does that add the reference count? Yes, it does add a reference count. You said here, is that right, Sean? If they install bundle A, bundle B is already installed. You launch bundle B directly and you hit repair. That's going to add a self-reference count. Yeah. And then you will uninstall A. It removes its reference count from bundle B. Bundle B stays invisible on the machine because there's no ARP entry visible at that point. Yeah. So those are the two. I think those are the only two bad cases, the user scenario. Uh, bad user experiences that in the end is you can, if you repair the bundle, if the bundles are already installed by a parent bundle, you repair it, you can leak the bundle. It'll be invisible in ARP. You won't be able to see it to remove it. And the other one is if you install it, the bundle B first, then you install bundle A, then you can say, oh, I don't want this on my machine and it will never remove it. It'll, that ARP entry will stay there until you also remove bundle A. Those are the two user experiences. How bad are those? How many people ship the nest, the child bundle? Make How many people will make the child bundle available? VC Redist. Yeah, VC Redist is... Oh, <laughs> Yeah, pretty much one. the canonical example. Yes. Yep. And, then, it's, and it's a worst case as far as, you know, uh, market penetration. And the order that it gets installed will be worst case as well. Could be all the different directions. Yeah. Yeah. So this is why I made the visible default to yes when permanent is yes. I still don't like the multiple bits getting twiddled. But I was thinking this is a flashback to our previous conversation. But it, makes, it makes perfect sense in this case. Permanent should almost always be visible, right? I mean, and I, I think we should not, change MSI package to be like that. Yeah, too. I think MSI should be the same. Yeah. Is that enough? I mean, I can make it scenario one 
you repair the bundle and then that causes it to register. That's possible. But it's only going to be a repair. Yeah, that's the one I'm actually least worried about. Maybe I don't know. It's probably actually the worst case. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which of these is the worst case. Um, the, the thing that I find interesting is, is the levels of the levels of leakage. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've said before, leaking stuff in the package cache, abandoning stuff in the package cache is really bad. You don't want to do that. Yeah, it's going to um, be really big. But this is a case where the bundle is intact. It's just not visible in ARP. Yeah, but It's you, still there. You won't be able to find it. Well... As a normal with, user, will not be. As a normal it. user, that is correct. Um, but it's still there, and and you know, if this is a problematic scenario, you can, you know, you can document how to find the bundle. It's not great, but it's not, you know, horrible. There is something to be said for the bundle being visible if there's only one reference remaining. If there's a self-reference remaining, uh, sure, right. I worry a little bit about the if I install the bundle, then it gets installed as part of something else, like VC Redist, and then I try to remove it, and it won't get removed from ARP, <laughs> and you just keep uninstalling. You're like, what is wrong with this thing? I guess it's not our bug then. It's actually, or it's, it's V, it'll show up as VC Redis' bug, right? <laughs> I mean, that, isn't that what someone created a discussion on a few weeks ago about ASP.NET Core? Yeah, not being able to remove all their stuff. Well, in that case, yeah, they, sort of. That one is, they install, the, the their side by side was crazy in ASP.NET Core and .NET Core, so it was, you end up with gobs and gobs of all these different versions installed on your machine. And that was part of their problem as well. I, I, I don't know how, I mean, VC Redis is a good example. You want to remove VC Redis and it will not remove because something else installed it and took a reference count on it. I mean, that could be mostly mitigated if we had a really nice way of giving them all their dependence and all that was integrated in a nice user experience. This can't be removed because these things depend on it. Remove those things. Kind of like the standard files and use dialog, you know, something, the standard dependency dialog. Which we have, except there's no detail. We have a standard dependency dialog? Sorry, the dependency custom action. Oh, uh, right. There's no detail. It says, I think it gives you a count of, of dependencies. Oh. But, you know, I was just looking at that but, code yesterday, and I didn't, I didn't look close at that. I was, I was thinking about too many other things. Um, it got the name, though, the provider. It could. Name. I don't think the. But I don't know if the, the provider. custom action doesn't show it. Yeah, I don't know how useful that is. You almost need like a user localizable string to go with the provider name. No, okay. Anyway. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the, the silently not doing anything is going to drive people crazy. Oh, well, undoubtedly yeah, drive people but crazy. I, I'm, again, you know, unpleasant, but not incorrect. It'd be incorrect to just, oh, okay, fine. Uninstall it and you know, break yeah. your software. There, that's and leave it to you to figure out how to, you know, which thing needs to be repaired. Well, presumably um, you find out. You launch that program, it's broken, you repair it, and poof, VC Redis comes back. <laughs> Except, you know, this might be the fault of uh, something not using burn that doesn't actually have repair. Yeah, it, it's fair. Um I mean, this problem is 
been there already. Usually. And we're, you we're not worse off. Uh, well, I mean, I guess people are going to start registering dependencies where they weren't before. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you use the dependency stuff, then yes, you're right. This is you're right. It's not worse off than. Yeah, we're now that we're going to start giving you your dependencies, making your life better on those ways. Then you're right. You're not worse off than if you were doing all the work yourself manually. That's true. And in terms of having an actual dependency on, say, VC Redist, you're much better off. To have all the dependencies. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna become much harder to remove VC Redist early. Well, that's only true if they have a true provider. If they're using the bundle ID, the default, then every time they upgrade, the dependencies will be registered on the wrong thing. Not true. You're right. That's true. If they're just using the bundle ID, it will only, it won't save most of the cases. All right, so I, you guys are right. It, it's not worse than before. So maybe um, we'll get complaints about it. But and Bob's answer is going to be correct. It's the well, the alternative is to remove the thing and break everything, uh, or the things that depend on it. So that's the case. That's two. While true. And. If you want to in your BA, you can go and get the set of dependents that are dependent on you. You can do that. That is possible. It takes work. Um, maybe in you know Wix 5, 6, 7, we come up with a standard dependency dialog at some point. But <laughs> Burn doesn't have any UI in it, so you'd have to give it to with standard BA and anybody that wants to. Anyway, that. Um, and then the repair from... The standalone, if you install it as part of bundle, then you install it standalone and you repair it. And it adds a reference count without making itself visible such that it can get leaked. That is our behavior. That would be better if we can add the ARP entry at that point. Just so we don't leak the, the bundle, essentially. Because if it's not an ARP, people will not be able to find it. Yeah, that's it's hard cool. to defend that case, I guess is what I'm saying. The first one we can defend, the second one's harder to defend. Probably. Right? Yeah. So is that the the only takeaway from here, maybe? I've been racking my brain trying to remember if there's any other crazy case about this, but I think this was the one. It was all around the user experience of installing them in different orders. And and there's no hidden bundle that is not nested. Hidden bundles only happen when they're nested. And we already have the behavior on permanent. Okay, so two things came out of this, right? One, we should open an issue to make permanent and visible the same for MSI package as for a bundle package. And yeah. to have burn register ARP when repaired, and ARP's not there already, or I guess if ARP is, doesn't basically repair the ARP entry always, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool, Bob. Can you open that other one? Um, no, because I really don't rock it. It. it the, it's the permanent, if permanent, make the MSI packages visible. I'll, I'll, let me get a note here and I will do it myself. Ah. We'll write it down. I'll open it and I'll, Sean, do you want to fix that? If not, I'll, I'll get it. That's probably a long line, something I'll be doing. Either way, it's really simple. <laughs> yeah. I guess one thing I'll point out is that I implemented this as, 
the parent bundle is passing a new parameter to the child bundle. So it's the child bundle that's actually hiding itself, which means all V3 bundles are not going to be possible to be hidden because they don't support it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. This is V4 functionality. Yeah. You only does that mean that VC redest are most populous example this won't apply to? Yeah, until they adopt Wix4. Exactly. Right. Yep. Totally agree. Cool? Cool? Yeah. I think so. All right. Um, we're not going to get these three. One, two, three, and then the two at the top. That leaves us five, I think, for next week, or two weeks from now. Let's do that. We'll come back in, in two weeks and do that again. So to that point, questions, comments, things that people are still in chat want to talk about. It's lovely to see you guys all still here, hanging out, watching us battle our way through all these design questions on cool things in Wix 4. It's very cool. We need a new term because it's not just triage. We never do just triage. <sighs> That's fair. I, 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 it's, I don't want to call it design discussions and, and it is more than triage. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's it's not it's it's not dissimilar from the kinds of debates that I remember getting into when we were in office, where you're like this, and then sometimes the simplest bug would end up being the thing that created the longest discussions. Yep. And it only got worse when you got smarter people in the room, because um, they'd start bringing up impact cross the entire office suite as opposed to the particular area that you worked in. Um, and and that was called triage, even though you are corrected. It's much yeah. more than triage. So I'm I'm certainly open to additional terms. By the way, I'm filling time here, trying to fill in space, make sure that you guys in chat have uh, a chance to bring up anything that's going on, or if you just want to say hi or bye at the end here, because we're wrapping up. We will be back in two weeks, I think. I think two weeks is a normal kind of week. 28th of April. Yeah, looks good. Uh two weeks come back do this again uh the wix online meeting 9 30 april 28th did i fill enough space questions comments other things going on uh, otherwise we're fixing bugs uh if you if you miss hearing me talk i'll be back next week on wednesday talking about uh hopefully maybe possibly potentially maybe uh finishing uh the semantic versioning changes or at least the the coding parts of it uh, next week. I'm hoping for that. And hey, look, we've been talking about the dependency stuff. So if you didn't get enough conversations about dependencies, we probably have a little bit more of that then. Oh, and backwards compatibility and all that kind of good stuff. Oh, so much good, normal day in the life programmer problems. That's what we're doing here. Fixing bugs, making decisions making the world a little bit of a better place, at least our part of it. All right, that's it. We'll be back in two weeks. Same time, two weeks from now, 9.30 Pacific. And honestly, I expect we're going to do the same thing, hopefully with a shorter list and then maybe a shorter meeting and uh, with fewer things to talk about. But until then, all of you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.